Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. If you have watched either of our videos on double integrals and integrating either dx dy or dy dx, we're going to talk here about changing the order of integration. This will often occur whenever you have an integral and a function inside, and it turns out that the order that you're given makes it extremely difficult or even impossible to do by hand using functions that we know. So here are some basic examples. We'll talk through how to change the order of integration, looking at your region in the plane, and assigning your new order and the new bounds to go with your new order. Let's look at our first one here. We have an exponential. We can't really integrate e to the negative x squared first with respect to x. There's not really a way to do that with basic elementary functions that we know. So we're going to go ahead and change our integral to a double integral, but we're going to integrate dy dx. So I'm just going to go ahead and first set up that we're going to integrate e to the negative x squared dy dx instead. And the way we'll do this now is just simply to rewrite our bounds looking at the shape of our region here. So remember, if this is dx dy, these are x bounds. So this is x equals y and x equals 2. So we want to think about what we have. If we think about a region underneath this that is represented by our double integral and its bounds, so x equals y is this line that basically has slope 1 and goes through the origin, right? So this is x equals y, also known as y equals x, right? And then x equals 2 is a vertical line, and it goes through 2. So we have this is x equals 2 here. And what do you think about if we draw through in the x direction, then we should first go through x equals y and then go through 2. So you can see if I enter the region here and exit the region here, then this triangle is the actual region that I'm talking about. So my region is going to be here. This is my region R. And now you can see, obviously, this is from 0 to 2 in the y direction. So this is y equals 0, and this must be y equals 2 up here. So now what we want to do is just think of this region in terms of dy dx order. So we're going to fix an x and draw through in the y direction now instead to change our order of integration. So if I choose some x value and draw through in the y direction, I enter the region here at the horizontal line, which is the axis. So that is y equals 0. And then I exit the region through this diagonal line. Now I don't want to write it as x equals y because I'm integrating dy in here in this inner integral. So I need to write it as y equals x. And then we will also need constant bounds always for our outside integral here. So our x bounds, we would have an x bound on the left side of 0. And of course we have an x bound on the right side of 2. So we will be integrating from x equals 0 to x equals Two. So if I write it without sort of the training wheels on the bike here, then we'll have our outside integral from 0 to 2. We'll have our inside integral from 0 to x. We'll still have e to the negative x squared. And now we can integrate this dy dx. Let's look now at why the order of integration matters here. How does this help us? Well, what is e to the negative x squared if we're integrating dy? Well, it's just a constant, right? So I get this thing times y when I integrate dy first. So I'm going to leave my 0 to 2. And here I will just get y times what I had before, e to the negative x squared. And we'll evaluate that from 0 to x, and then we will integrate dx later. Now, think about what we're going to have. We're plugging in x for y and then 0 for y. So if I plug in x for y, I'm going to get an x e to the negative x squared. And if I plug in 0 for y, I will just get 0, right? So that minus 0 will just be that. And then we'll end up with this different integral dx than what we started with. And this is doable because now I can do this integral using u substitution. If I say u is equal to the exponent here, negative x squared, and du is then negative 2x dx, or if I want to sub directly for x dx, which is what I have, then I could say negative 1 half du is equal to x dx. And so now I can do this by u substitution where I could not do that before. So let's go ahead and continue over here. So I'm going to, let's bump out the negative 1 half that I got from my u substitution. Now remember that these are x bounds because we're integrating dx here. So you can solve for new bounds. I'm just going to leave these as old bounds, x equals 0 to x equals 2, 
and not make the extra effort of solving for them. And then we'll come back to x and plug those in later. So with our u substitution, we simply just got e to the u du. Now that's just about as easy as it gets, right? So we'll get negative 1 half. And then the antiderivative of e to the u du is just going to be e to the u again. And we'll have to plug in our bounds. Remember, these are still x bounds, so we don't want to plug them in yet. x equals 0 to x equals 2. So let's back substitute from u. Let's go back to x's so we can use this. So we'll get negative 1 half. And then we'll get e to the negative x squared from now just 0 to 2 because we have the right variable there. And let's plug in. So we'll get negative 1 half. If I plug in 2, I'll get e to the negative 4 minus, if I plug in 0, I'll just get e to the 0. And so we could do lots of things with this. We could go ahead and say, you know, negative 1 half. You could call this 1 over e to the 4 minus 1. You could do some reversing of order here, but we'll go ahead and keep this as our answer. So that's the answer to our integral that we couldn't do in the other order, but we did it now integrating dy dx. Looking at our next example, we have the double integral. We have sine y squared dy inside. Integrating sine y squared by hand with elementary functions is not so good. So we're going to go ahead and change this to a double integral of sine y squared. But we're going to actually integrate dx dy in this one. So we'll have sine y squared dx dy. We want to look at the shape of our region. So we're integrating dy in the original. That means these are y equals in here. So let's just graph those first. I think you can kind of tell we're in this first quadrant of the xy plane. So I'm going to focus there. Um, so I have y equals x. Well, that's going to be the line that we got last time, right? So y equals x. And then y equals pi would be a horizontal line at about 3.14-ish, right? So we'll just say, okay, horizontal line there, and the value is pi. And then from 0 to pi in the x direction, right? So that means 0, and then I guess this must be pi. So you just want to be careful. Are we above the diagonal or below the diagonal? And think about what you're supposed to do to read this. You fix this, you draw through in this direction. So if I pick an x value and I draw through in the y direction, I should first hit the region at my lower bound, which is y equals x. So this is where I enter the region. Where do I exit the region? At y equals pi. So I enter here, I exit here. That tells me it's the upper triangle that is my region in the plane, not the lower triangle. So we want to go ahead and say this is my region R, and now we can decide what to do here. So now changing to dx dy, let's fix a y value and draw through in the x direction. So if I pick this to be my y value, the way I go in and out of the region is I enter on this vertical line, which is x equals 0. And then I come out of the region on this diagonal line. Now I don't say y equals x because I'm integrating dx. I need an x equals, so I say x equals y instead of y equals x. And now for our outer bounds here, we just need constants. So the lowest y value, that's going to be on the axis, which is 0, y equals 0. And then the highest value you can tell is up here at the top where y equals pi. So get y equals pi for this one. All right, let's go ahead and rewrite this. So we'll say integral from 0 to pi, integral from 0 to y, that rhymes, sine of y squared dx dy. I feel like we just made a poem out of an, an integral. Well, moving on. Okay, so we have our inside integral here. If I integrate dx, well, that's all a constant just like before, right? So I get x times sine of y squared. Kind of like with our e to the negative x squared when we did that one, right? Okay, and then these are x bounds that we're going to evaluate. So from 0 to y, we'll plug in for x, and then we'll integrate dy after we do this. Let's go ahead and move down and continue. So from 0 to pi, dy on the outside. Now, if I plug in y and 0 for x, then I will get y sine of y squared minus, if I plug in 0 for x, the whole thing just becomes 0, so we really don't get anything when we do minus that. 
and now I get y times sine of y squared dy. And this can now be done using u substitution, right? So for this one here, u should be equal to y squared inside of the sine function du is going to equal 2y dy. Here I just have y dy, so if you want to divide both sides by 2 and say, well, you really have 1 half du is what goes in for y dy, then you can do that. So we'll go ahead and insert that information. Uh, remember, these are y bounds, so be careful here. So we want to say from y equals 0 to y equals pi, and then we will have just sine of u du with a one half out front, right? You can leave the one half in or out. It doesn't really matter, right, if it's a constant. Okay, if we go ahead and do the antiderivative here, then I would get negative cosine of u. So I'd actually get negative half, and then we'll have cosine of u. And remember, these are still y bounds, y equals zero and y equals pi. And we'll need to plug those in for y. So let's go back and replace our u with y squared. So we'll say negative one half cosine of y squared from just plain old zero to pi now. So let's plug those in. We get negative half. And then if I plug in pi, I get this thing that I can't, you know, it looks like maybe I know what this is, but we really don't, I think. I mean, maybe you do, but. I don't think many people know what cosine of pi squared is. We know what cosine of pi is probably from unit circle, but not cosine of pi squared. So we'll just leave that. Um, and then minus cosine of zero. Now that one we should know, right? Okay, let's say what these things are. So we'll get minus one half. And then we'll say this is going to be cosine of pi squared minus one. You could, you know, you could distribute the negative one half in there if you want, but we'll go ahead and leave it like that, I think. All right, so for our last one here, changing the order, we've got the square root of x cubed plus one, trying to integrate dx. If this was maybe an x squared, we could do a trig sub, or if I had some other x's out here, it might be doable, but this is pretty formidable, I think, the order that we have. So let's go ahead and change this up. I'm going to say this is going to equal the double integral of square root x cubed plus 1. And we're going to go ahead and write this as dy dx. And then we'll need to figure out our region, right? So everything looks probably pretty positive here. So I'm just going to draw my first quadrant. Now that won't always be the case, but just to give you the hang of this, we've done a lot of stuff in quadrant 1 here for our region. So these are, since it's dx on the inside, this is x equals, and this is x equals. Okay, so x equals square root y. Another way to see this is y equals x squared. So we actually get something that looks kind of like this, right? That's x equals square root y, also known as y equals x squared, at least part of it anyway, right? And then x equals 2 is going to just be some vertical line through 2 get that there. And then from 0 to 4 as far as y goes. So here's 0 and you know here's probably 4 up here. So what people might do is they'll draw like y equals 4 and then they'll say well is it here or is it below and how do I know? And you look at the original to know where it is in terms of this curve. So in the original we would choose a y value and draw through in the x direction and that's the order we should hit stuff. So if I pick some y value here and I draw through in the x direction you can see, right, I go first through root y, and then I come out x equals 2. So that is going in the region here and coming out of the region here. And if we do that, then that means it's the space below this parabola here. So we actually get this space down here being our region r. Now we want to look at this region r based on our new order, dy dx. So now we'll fix an x and draw through in the y direction. So if I choose an x value here and I draw through straight in the y direction increasing, I enter the region on the horizontal axis, so that's going to be at y equals 0. I exit the region right there, that's on my curve. Now it needs to be in y equals form because we're integrating dy on the inside, so I can't say x equals square root y, I need to say y equals x squared. And then constant bounds for the outside, 
x leftmost value is 0 and rightmost value for the region is 2. So our bounds are x equals 0 to x equals 2 for this one. And we'll go ahead and rewrite and integrate. So from 0 to 2 and from 0 to x squared, our square root of x cubed plus 1 dy dx. Now, supposedly this is going to make it better, right? This won't always be the case. You may rearrange it and it's just as difficult, but here we're giving you some examples where it definitely helps. Okay, so we'll leave our integral 0 to 2. If I integrate this dy, then that's just going to become y times the square root of x cubed plus 1. And we will evaluate that from 0 to x squared, and then we'll do the dx thing later. Now, plugging in x squared for y and then plugging in 0 for y. So leaving my outer 0 to 2, I then get x squared root x cubed plus 1 minus, when I plug in 0, the whole thing will become 0, so I really just get this. And now this sets up a nice u substitution for us again, right? So we could go ahead and say here that u is the inside of the root x cubed plus 1 because I spy a multiple of its derivatives, some kind of an x squared on the outside. So du in this case would be 3x squared dx. And I have x squared dx, so we could divide by 3 and input 1 third du or x squared dx. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember, these are x bounds, not u bounds. So this is x equals 0, and this is x equals 2. And I have a 1 -third, so I'll put my 1 -third out here. And then I would get the square root of u du. And now remember, we can think of the square root of u as the 1 half power. So if we have the 1 half power of u, when we take the antiderivative, the power will go up by 1. We'll get u to the 3 halves. Dividing by 3 halves would be like multiplying by 2 thirds. And then we'll need to plug in bounds once we convert back to x. Remember, these are x equals 0 and x equals 2. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to combine my constants here. Let's say 2 over 9 instead of those two separate things. And then to the 3 halves is u, so that is x cubed plus 1, all to the 3 halves. Evaluating from now 0 to 2, now that we're back in terms of x. If we go ahead and keep our 2 ninths and plug in 2, so 2 cubed would be 8 plus 1, so we'd get 9 to the 3 halves. Minus, if I plug in 0, I get 0 plus 1, so I get 1 to the 3 halves here. And then what is 9 to the 3 halves? Well, uh, this half part means the square root, so the square root of 9 is 3, and then cube that would give us 27. Minus, uh, the square root of 1 is 1, and then cube that, you still get 1. So we get 27 minus 1, that'd be 26 in there, times the 2. I think it gives us 52 over 9 for this double integral here. Okay, those are some examples of changing the order of integration to give you access to some by-hand method of doing your integrals. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in a future video.